Hello SeaWolves and welcome to episode number three of Solo and you're probably wondering why I'm all dressed like this. Well that's because today we're actually going to be stepping on board and exploring the different uh, systems on a boat that uh, obviously you need to know. So uh, come along with me and let's go. focus yeah here we are so uh, today we're gonna go uh, on board and it's actually kind of uh, fun that the boat is out of the water right now because uh, that means we can also discuss some of the uh, underwater aspects uh, of sailing boats and have lots of uh, sailing boats all around here with different keels and stuff so uh, we can actually look at all the uh, important parts but uh, now first I'm gonna grab my uh, stuff out of this little car here and uh, get it all up there and then we'll get straight into the lesson so here she is the ship that we are going to be sailing what a piece of junk look she will do 0.5 knots over 6.7 knots she may not look like much right now but she's got it where it counts and i made some special modifications but uh, as i said i'm working on the bottom right now so you can see here very clearly my rudder my propeller blade and uh, the keel this is a, a fin keel as it said and uh, yeah you can see that uh, especially as far as keels goes um, you know like I said it's it's made to counterbalance the weight of the uh, of the sail and the direction of the sail you can see here one that actually has a, a gap in the uh, middle and a kind of an uh, like a sort of airplane wing bulb below uh, we can see another very different design here again you know also you know probably for some specific purpose giving the boat a specific uh, advantages and here we can see a good example of a long keeler so uh, you know boats with a keel like this are uh, usually very good on keeping their angle but horrible to steer in close quarters so if you want to steer backwards with a boat like this it's pretty horrible uh, but on the other hand I heard a story once from somebody who thought they, they put their boat on autopilot but actually didn't but they had a fin keel or they had a, a full uh, keel long keeler and actually for two hours they sailed until he figured out that they actually weren't on the autopilot but the boat is just so steady in its course here's another bigger long keeler kind of a good example so here you can kind of see it so this is another beautiful example of a long keel very well kept beautiful little boat by the way como no maybe if you're watching drop us a comment very beautiful uh, little boat and so back to my little beauty up here what a stunning weather today and uh, and so you can also see that uh, every hole uh, has a bunch of holes in it so these are you know some exhaust holes for the engine this is the the kitchen uh, drain then we also have some input holes here so this is to bring water to the engine for example and uh, here we have another one which is for the uh, forward heads and uh, you can see that you know with all the boats if you look at the bottom here you see it also there's uh, you know always a bunch of these uh, through hull fittings in there to either let out or let in uh, you know water as needed so uh, yeah that's kind of what you need to know really about uh, you know the bottoms of boats obviously you can see here that the shapes are very different so you can see that my shape for example is flat but it's still kind of has a kind of a, a nick in it like a cut in it while the more modern boats if you look at this one for example it's a bit more modern you can see that they're even more flat on the uh, bottom with this one especially you can see like how flat it is compared uh, you know to mine for example which is flat also but a bit more rounder and so uh, when you have a more rounder bow you kind of move through the waves more nicely 
so less slamming, let's say. My front is relatively flat, so I do slam a bit still if I'm in a seaway, uh, but not as much as a boat like this uh, would do. And uh, at the same time, uh, you, you do slam more with the flat bottom, but it also helps the boat plane a bit more. So you know these boats can plane easier, and you know because of that they are you know a little bit uh, uh, faster. So you know you sacrifice a bit of comfort, but you get a bit of uh, speed. And so. You know, the, the subject of hulls and keel shapes and this type of thing, and also rudder shapes. Uh, you can see that there are many uh, different rudders also. I mean, they all look alike, but uh, you, you can see that the shapes are also very uh, distinct from rudder to rudder. This is much more square. You know, my shape is again very different. And you can see that this is attached in a certain way. This is attached kind of in a similar uh, way, but you can see that mine, which is a skeg configuration, is uh, kind of different. It's actually a bit more sturdy because it's hanging on two uh, points, kind of instead of being suspended by one uh, point. So in case of collision and things like that, this is a bit more of a stronger uh, construction. And so, uh, yeah, in, in that sense, here you can see another example of like a single uh, point. And uh, oh, and here we have another example of something again a little bit more different. So lots of diversity when it comes to the design and function of boats. And uh, yeah, every design has its advantages and uh, downsides, uh, basically. So that's kind of it for the downside department of uh, the boat. So it's time for the next kind of intellectual part here. Now, last time I explained about upwind, downwind and so upwind using the uh, the sails as wings and going downwind when we use the sails more as a bag or as a kite that kind of fills up with air and then you know kind of pulls us along with the wind or using it as a wing and kind of using the aerodynamics of the wing countered with the weight of the keel to kind of pull us and shimmy into the wind. Like if you didn't miss that, then you know, please check the previous episode. Now we just take a look at the keel and saw that keel shapes can be very different from boat to boat and that also the shape of the hull can be kind of, uh, you know, different depending on uh, how you want to use it. So uh, now that we know all that, it's time to move on to a very different part of the boat and the problems there. <clears throat> so now it's time to talk about kind of all of the above water parts of the boat and the essential parts of the sailing systems there and how and why they work the way they work. So if we look above deck of the boat, we see of course that we have uh, the deck basically. So I'll, I'll draw it a little bit here so you can see obviously this is not going to be the scale. And we have the skeg down here and of course the rudder like I showed you. Now above deck we have the mast, obviously not to scale, and uh, we have these uh, kind of, uh, they're mostly made out of uh, steel, they, we got these steel lines that we call stays on the front and the back and also on the side, so even though you can't really see it here in the drawing because it's the same color, there, we also have them here and we usually have some spreaders here in the side, maybe multiple ones. And those uh, metal lines, we call them stays, are responsible for keeping the mast upright. So they're an essential part of how the sailboat works. They're usually very deeply anchored into the deck and to some very strong structures underneath uh, the deck. And they are really the main reason that the, that the mast stays upright. Now attached to the mast, kind of the standard boat that we're talking about, we have the boom. So there's a swivel point kind of here and we have the boom yes that's the basic uh, uh, setup above board yes yeah? so we have the stays that keep up the mast and we have the boom now on most boats like mine also for example the back stay also has an extra function in the sense that we can actually tension this more and when you tension the back stay you also automatically tension the fore stay and you pull the mast a little bit more uh, back which you know has different functions in order to make the boat go uh, faster and kind of optimize your sails. We're not going to get into the details of that right now but just to kind of you know give you an example of different control surfaces and where they are. But uh, the main uh, thing that I want to talk about in this episode is sails and kind of the naming of sails and you know what what kind of the shapes of and how you can recognize uh, different sails. And so 
And when we look at the standard uh, sailing boat with uh, with one mast, but basically the principles that I'm telling you, they're going to be translating to any boat with, you know, no matter how many masts they have, the principle is the same. And so we have a mast and we have what we call the uh, boom. Then uh, the first thing that basically all boats have is they have a main sail. So that is a sail that is attached kind of to uh, the boom and usually it's kind of triangular shaped but these days also you often see that they're kind of uh, have a little bit of a square top let's say maybe with a harder uh, piece uh, in there but they're shaped something like this then we have the the shape on the front of the boat the sail on the front of the boat and we have many many different options there and we're going to talk today about kind of what and why we have different options there and that mainly has to do with the fact that uh, you know we know the problem of getting from a to b now going upwind and downwind and how we can do that using the sails as winds or bags but there's another central problem if we want to travel by wind, which is what we do with the sailboat. And that is that we have to manage the fact that the wind is not constant. So the strength of the wind, the amount of power that we have at our disposal to travel by sailboat is never really the same. And that's where a very important role of the sails come in, which is a process that we call reefing and so the word to reef or reefing is a sailing term that means to make sails smaller to reduce the amount of sails so if i say to you let's reef i mean we're going to reduce the amount of square meters that we have uh, of sail that we have up or let's take a reef for example means the same thing or if I would say, let's take out a reef, that means that we're going to uh, take away the reduction of sales that we made previously. And so that's kind of how this word uh, works. And so we're going to go through all of the reefing options on my boat here in order to kind of explain the general principle. So think of this as, the, as my boat that you just uh, saw. Now, we have the main sail, as I said, and uh, the first sail generally that I have up, if, uh, if we're gonna go from the biggest amount of sails that I have to the smallest amount of sail, is that we start with a head sail that looks kind of like this. So it's attached to the forestay, and uh, it, will, uh, it will go kind of all the way to the bottom there. And then the size of it is about this. So uh, if my cockpit house is kind of here, the size of it will be something like this. So it will extend quite a bit beyond the mast. You know, if we think of this as 100%, then my, uh, my uh, biggest head sail uh, is about 130%. And so whenever a head sail extends lengthwise past the mast, we call it a genoa. Uh, for short, we sometimes use just the letter, so a G, G1, G2, G3. You may have heard these terms, or A2 or A3, this type of letters. So the G stands for Genoa, and Genoa means that the sail extends beyond the mast, right? And so if I was sailing with full sail, so in relatively light winds, this would be my general uh, sailing plan. So I have a main sail, and I have the uh, Genoa. And so how does this work exactly? Well, there are a few things that are kind of cool to know about this. And so you can see that the mast and the sword, they kind of form more or less one line. But imagine that we are the wind and we are looking at this picture. Now, if this mainsail on this side would be much bigger than the sail on this side, then we're going to sort of be very unbalanced because this, this line through the boat where the mast and the, and the sword is, they kind of form a pivot. So if I push really hard here, then the boat is going to want to go this way. Or if I push way harder on this side, then the boat is going to want to turn that way. So an important part with sailing and sailing plants and also reefing, so making things smaller, is that it's very important to keep this situation balanced more or less so that the boat doesn't feel like it constantly wants to steer in one way or the other because we're applying way more power to the back or to the front yes and so at this point when i have my main sail and my big genoa one so the biggest genoa that i have up then my boat is basically balanced because those sails were designed square meters wise power wise to be more or less balanced so this would be a situation where maybe if there's up to about 15 to maybe 18 knots of wind constantly with maybe you know a few gusts here and there then i can very comfortably sail with this 
uh, uh, sailing plan. I can just keep sailing with it. Everything is safe, nothing is overpowered. Everything is basically good. But if we go over that, uh, that 18 knots or so and the gusts start to be a lot stronger and we're going towards 22, 23, maybe gusts with 25 knots, this type of things, then it's time for me to reef. Now, uh, for me, because I, have, uh, I don't have a rolling furler system or anything like fancy like that on the boat, I'm old school, so I actually have to change my sail from sail to sail, but that kind of helps actually with this explanation. That means I'm gonna go through my second sail on my head sail, and I'm gonna take a first reef in my main sail. Now let's start with the main sail. So my main sail is separated into several parts where at different heights along the mainsail, and whenever you see a mainsail, you know, from now on, you will probably notice that immediately, that there is kind of a ring loop here, and a ring loop here, and a ring loop there, and there's also one here, and one here, and one here. And so on my boat, there's a hook on both sides located here. And if I want to reduce this sail, then I'm going to lower it, to respectively this part for this level uh, for the first reef. So I'm gonna take my, my uh, mainsail down a little bit and I'm gonna take this loop and I'm gonna throw it over the hook so that it's now secured here to my boom. And here I have a set of lines. So I have my reef line one that goes kind of here and then into my boom and goes to a point here where I have a winch where I can put power on it. And I have my second reef line, same thing, goes into the boom. And my third reef line goes into the boom. And they all end at the same point where I have a winch where I can power them. So I will lower the sail, I will put this hook over the loop, and I will tighten this line. And that will lower the entire sail combination so that the top is now somewhere, I'll take another color for that. So now the top of my sail ends up somewhere here. And I basically have a smaller, mainsail left after I've taken that first reef. Now, uh, if I do that and I still have my Genoa 1 up, so my biggest headsail, then the situation is now going to get pretty unbalanced. Now, unless I'm going really downwind or something when, you know, balance is a little bit less uh, uh, important. But if I'm going on any kind of reaching course, so kind of, you know, on a 90-ish degrees or something to the wind, then uh, if the wind pushes here, it's going to be pushing a lot harder with a lot more force than here because I've made the sail much smaller now. And so uh, the boat is constantly going to want to go in that direction. It's going to be pushed sort of around the corner and I'm going to have to steer really hard to kind of keep it on a course. So it's gonna be important for me to reef this sail as well. And so I will take down this entire sail and I will replace it with my Genoa 2, which is a sail that's sort of on the top. It's a little bit lower and it's also a little bit shorter. It still goes past the mast, as I say, it's a Genoa, but so it will end somewhere here and then it'll go like this and like this. And so that's kind of Genoa uh, two. And so now I've reduced the amount of square meters on this area as well. If you have a rolling furler, you might just roll it up here and that way make the sail uh, shorter, yes? So now I've gone from kind of full sail situation to the point where I have two smaller sails on. And this is kind of reef number one on both my main sail and my head sail. So I've reefed both of them one time. I've gone one reef in both. Now, if the wind would increase again, I would have to make another reduction. So same process if we go, let's say from about 25 to about 30 knots or so, or the gusts are really going way over 25 knots, then for me, it's time to put in another reef. And so similar to uh, the first time, I'll use a different color here again, then I will reduce the, the mainsail again by another reef. So now it will become, you know, quite, uh, small with the second reef uh, still in and similar here I will now put a new head sail but this time it will be my jib because it actually ends before uh, the mast and it's also cut a little bit differently so it's cut a little bit higher here which makes it a little bit better for you know sailing into the wind and just kind of maneuvering in stronger winds and so now we have two reefs we have two reefs in the main and two reefs here and you know now the difference between a Genoa and a jib, and jibs are usually also the material is a little bit thicker, it's a little bit stronger, it's a bit built for stronger winds. Now, uh, 
if the wind gets even stronger at some point, then of course uh, we have more options. And so uh, what I can do is I can again take another reef by putting in my jib number two. So as you can see, it's kind of logical, like Genoa one is the biggest, Genoa two is smaller. Some people have a Genoa three, just you can, you can have any kind of number uh, of degrees uh, there. But I have a jib two, which is kind of the same thing. So again, it ends a little bit lower and it's cut even a little bit higher like this and that's my uh, jib too and at that point I will take the third reef uh, in the main so that will go way down and then I have like a very tiny bit of mainsail up so now I have three reefs in my mainsail and three reefs in my headsail configuration so uh, if the wind would get even stronger, so we're going, you know, in the direction of above 35 knots to maybe 40, gusting 45, really crazy situations, then on my particular boat, I also have what's called the removable inner forestay. So we have the stays here that are kind of keeping the mast up, but I also have one that's usually, you know, it, it starts about here and it's usually... Um, you know just on my mast uh, somewhere but if I want to use it I can put it down and so that gives me an extra stay that runs around here and now what I can do what's usually my first step if the wind gets even stronger is I can move this J2 sail and instead of flying it on my uh, on my uh, force day I can run it on my inner force day and what that does is it takes the sail from there to here so it's essentially the same sail it's just in a different location but the location of the sail is now much closer to the center of the boat to the center of the mast and so the lever the distance between where the force is applied to the center of the boat is much smaller and so that reduces again the uh, the pressure on my rig making it safer for me to sail in those type of conditions so generally that's my next step still too much then I can actually completely take away my mainsail so I will just put it away if that is still too much then I have an even smaller uh, J which is kind of my storm uh, jib which I then also let me use another color again which I then would fly here so that's a really small uh, uh, jib again within kind of the J2 which I can also put on the inner force day and then I really have only about like five uh, square meters or something uh, uh, up. So that's a very, very uh, area, a small area of sail in order to be able to still navigate and be able to sail in very, very strong winds and keep some uh, control in that situation. And so that's kind of going through uh, the standard reef. Now there are also a number of other uh, sails you've probably seen in the previous video that when I'm sailing downwind, so with the wind, I also have this gigantic sail, which we call a uh, spinnaker. And basically the difference between a Genoa and a, uh, and a spinnaker or an A as it's sometimes called or an S is that they're kind of free flowing. So they're not attached to the forestay, but they're attached by one point here. And then my, my bloomer uh, sail, for example, so the biggest one that I have, it, it kind of flies freely like this. And so if I, if I draw it in a three-dimensional way, it's just this huge bag that kind of collects a huge amount of wind like this. 
And so that's a, uh, a spinnaker, so that would be my S1, and I only have one, so I have a spinnaker one. And then there's also what we call asymmetrical uh, spinnakers, so they are not uh, you know, symmetrically flying right in front of the boat, but they're kind of more uh, to the side. So they're in essence like a very big Genoa, but instead of like the Genoa, they're not attached to the forestay. So they also have two points, but other than that, they're much more shaped in the same way. Uh, well, they're not shaped like a Genoa, but they're attached much more in the same location as a uh, Genoa. And that kind of gives us the term of like the spinnaker, so that's the ass. We have the asymmetrical spinners, which are called A's. We have the Genoas, which are called the G's. And then we have the jibs, which are the J's. And so when you're watching most sailing matches, you will often hear them talking about spinnakers. You'll hear them talk about A1s, A2s, A3s, G1s, G2s, and J1s, J2s, J3s, etc. And so those stand for spinnaker, the asymmetrical spinnaker or Jenniker. We have the Genoa and we have the jib. And so those are the names of the sail and there's the, the reason why they exist. Because essentially they exist in order for us to be able to take away power when we have enough. Because each boat is designed for a certain amount of power. And so if there's not enough power in the wind, then we can put up lots more sail until we reach enough power to go at full speed. But if there's too much wind, which is you know, the situation most of the time, then we can reduce sail to make sure that we have the correct amount of power to sail the way, the, the way we want. Now, on top of this kind of power regulation mechanism in the sail, there is the uh, optimization thing. So that's kind of a process that is on top of this. And then we get into the area of, well, how does your J2 uh, compare to mine? Is your J2, for example, uh, you know, really good at driving your boat forward? Or uh, is my J2 a little bit better? And so in the details of all these different shapes, um, there is lots and lots of fine tuning uh, uh, to be done. One of the reasons, for example, why I don't have a, a rolling furler is because when you roll up the sail, generally it really ruins the shape and you end up with a sail that's maybe the perfect size but the shape is not very good and so you actually lose a lot of efficiency in the sail because the shape is so bad it's really like a bag and it has ruffles and it just uh, it's not very like you can just look at it and see that it's not very efficient for the most part whilst if you actually change sails then you know that each sail is shaped kind of perfectly uh, for the job so that's one you know argument that you can use to go for one system or the other for example the same with uh, with main sails so you have main sails that have you know two reefs in it or two reefs but what is the distance between the reefs how much are you reefing all these details just like the the uh, the keels that you just saw in the beginning of this video or the rudders for every boat these details are completely different this is how my reefing system works, but there are also many boats that have, for example, a loop, like I said, with lines in here, but they also have loops in here. And so you have one line that you pull and that line essentially pulls all these points uh, down in order to uh, achieve the reef. So there's many different systems. What I'm trying to kind of get across is that despite the fact that every boat manufacturer and designer solves these problems differently, the most important thing is a boat is just a means to get from A to B across the water. We are using the, the, the sails either as wings or as bags to go upwind or downwind. And within that situation, we have to be able to adjust the amount of square meters up to get the right amount of power to, to use our boat. Upwind, we use a bit less power than downwind. We'll get into all those things later. But that's what we're using them for. And then what are the systems that we're actually using? So that would be reefing to get the, uh, the right amount of power, let's say. And what are the names for all the different sails which are you know, coming from that process to change from a Genoa to a J or to go from a spinnaker to an asymmetrical spinnaker, etc. These are all transitions that have to do with either the wind increased or decreased or we want to go on a different course. And so that's the last thing I want to include here that some sails are much better suited for different courses. So 
A spinnaker, like I said, is really only suited for strong uh, downwind, uh, well not strong winds, but for downwind conditions, let's say. Where an asymmetrical spinnaker are generally a bit stronger, they're a little bit less scary to operate, and so they're really good for sailing downwind in some stronger winds, for example. The Code Zero, what you hear a lot in the Vendor Globe, for example, is an especially great sail for those type of uh, you know, downwind kind of uh, uh, angles. A jib, on the other hand, is very, very suited for upwind sailing. So if I want to upwind sail on my boat, for example, I'll either be doing it on my Genoa 2, which especially my Genoa 2 is like kind of uh, also made to be good to go uh, upwind. So it gives me a lot of power, but it has a pretty good shape for sailing upwind. But my J, so my, my biggest jib, my jib one, is really the perfect sail for upwind. So I can actually up, upwind sail with that well into the 30 to 35 knots or something like that before I need to uh, reef again. And it just depowers really well. It has a really perfect shape and I'm able to sail my boat very high up in the wind with this particular sail because it was just very well uh, uh, designed. And so each sail has its function within the, the reefing structure of the boat that you're sailing, but it also, depending on any of the 360 you know, courses that are available, there are different sailing combinations uh, on each boat that kind of go with that and work with that. I hope that you enjoyed this further dive into the basic uh, uh, principles. Uh, I'm really taking care to kind of show it, you know, especially in different boats with different keels, etc., so that it's going to be much more easier for you to kind of grasp the underlying principles rather than just how one boat, you know, how my boat works, but kind of including all of the different data to really give you a broad and a bit more deeper uh, understanding. So that basically once, you know, after following this course, you step onto any boat really, you can really at least grasp all of the different central principles that are kind of uh, going on. And so uh, in the next lesson, we're gonna talk about lines and kind of the control surfaces. So you know now, you know, what the sails are and how they are used and how they relate to the mast and the keel and you know, why all those things are kind of there. In the next episode, we're gonna talk about how we control all of those different uh, surfaces. So from the rudder to the keel, the mast, and also of course, how the sails are controlled and kind of the ideas and principles behind that. So uh, look forward to episode four of Solo for that information. Thank you all again very much uh, for watching. Uh, please make sure to uh, give this one a, a thumbs up if you uh, enjoy learning uh, with me and I leave your comments and feedback uh, below. And please, uh, you know, keep supporting the channel. Go to seawolstv.com, uh, you know, become a sponsor or a bagger, get maybe a hoodie or a hat or you know something uh, cool to join and help the channel grow so uh, i wish you a very pleasant day and see you in the next episode of solo ciao